good evening, good evening. Let all of God's people say amen, amen. This is the day that God had made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. To God be the glory for the thing that he has done. All right, all right. It's another exciting, exciting day in service of the Lord. Amen. Anyone out there with us, go ahead and time, chime in. Let me know that you're here. Amen. Brother George, how you doing, Brother George Goodman with us? My niece, Brenda, from Chicago. How's it going, niece? Evangelist Canada watching with us. As always, Michelle, another niece down in Dundee. Good evening to everyone, and thank you for, for tuning in. Elma Hudson, First Lady, Pastor, how you doing? Good evening to our friends, our family, and all your chief, Dishman and Clara, how are you doing? So glad that you can tune in with us. Evelyn Williams, my sister, Pee Wee. Katrina's with us, amen. Bob Hibbler, amen. To God be the glory for the things that he has done, amen. <clears throat> how you feeling? Let us know out there, all right? Dr. Tara, Dr. Badger with us, amen. You got any prayer requests, go ahead and Type them into the uh, comment box. Tara, another niece, and uh, Bernard out of Chicago with us. Karen is watching with us. Amen. All right. Evangelist Canada. Amen. Got some music here we're going to play while we get started. All right. Mother Cat Smith is with us. Amen. Good evening to all. This is uh, Ashford Sanders. Andre Hodge with us. Ashford Sand, you may remember him from Sunday Best. See, Rita's with us this evening. Ashford Sanders, and what is he singing? Millions. Amen. Mother Adam May is with us. Adam May Calhoun uh, Jenkins. Ashford Sanders from Sunday Best. Millions. All right, type your prayer request into the uh, coming box. Deacon Jenna Johnson with us. How you doing? All right, Rand Fay Randy Fell and Barbara Fell. Hey, Richard, Mr. Richard Conway and Patterson with us. If How you doing I there? Amen. Still praying for the Granberry family, the Ka Katrina, so Caitlin, Jada, Reverend McConnell, William. Anyone that lost loved one, still praying for you. Amen. They'll probably Millions by Ashford Sanders. Uh, Ashford Sanders, rather. Add Cat Smith to the prayer list. Pray for the Lambert family. I condole it with them. Amen. Read a very wolf for this evening. How them grandmas and Tim doing? Didn't make it. I was one of the ones who did. Yeah, millions didn't make it. We were just blessed. We were one of the ones they didn't make it that made it. Katrina said, that's her. Although they didn't make it, she was one of the ones who did. We blessed. Thank God for the many blessings. All right, Brother Johnson, good. Like I said, you got any prayer request? Add them to the coming box. Praying for all our pastor, preachers, teachers this first throughout the uh, throughout the universe. Praying for New Hope down in White Oak and Pastor Hudson to tune in always faithful. Thank you so very much. Praying for him and First Lady Eva and the rest of their congregation. Just think about it, folks. Look, Folks are perishing around us day by day, but by the grace of God, we made it. We're going to make it. So many heartaches. I made it. I made it. Reverend Bird, how you doing, Robert Bird? We're up for this evening. Thank you for your saving power. Sharon Hodges, how you doing? Thank you for joining. Amen. I made it. Million didn't make it, but we wanted to bless one. Some of you have dealt with diabetes. Cancer, diabetes. You're still here. Say, I made it. I made it. See, 
the doctor walked in my room. He said, do you want to live or you want to die? Ten years later, y'all, I'm still here. I made it over. I made it over. I made it over. Storm and rain. Yeah. I made it. Some of us got some serious stuff we're dealing with. COVID, diabetes, high blood pressure, lupus, cancer, survivor. We made it. Make it purposeful. I made it. By the grace of God, I made it. Made it. Let's play some more there for while we bring up prayer here. Turn it down just a little. Eternal God, we thank and praise you for life, for help and strength. So much to be thankful for, Lord. We realize that we just don't thank you enough. We thank you, Lord, God, that million fell by the wayside, but you're you blessed us, you touch us, you allowed us to stay in the land of the dying. Yes, this is the land of the dying, making preparation to go to the land of the living. Lord, our prayer list is long and going longer day by day. We just lift you up and praise your mighty name for touching us, for blessing us, allowing us to make it. There's another song where I say, I know somehow, I know some way we're going to make it with Jesus on our side. We're going to make it, and everything is going to be all right. Speaking old things that were not as if they had already happened, going from victory to victory to victory in Jesus' precious name. Now, Lord, give a word from thee, from, from on high for thee, thy people. We praise your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Cousin Edna Patton with us, Patterson. Amen. Miss Whalen, love how you doing. Amen. Millions didn't make it. But Lord, you blessed us. You blessed us one more time to make it. Yes, Lord. We made it. Amen. God bless you. And thank you so much for, for tuning in with us this evening. Amen. Scripture, we still dealing with Timothy. Amen. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. We we'll look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. I made it. Yes, yes. It wasn't for the grace of God. Men of would have lost our mind. Swinging from a pole somewhere. Somewhere a million then made it. But God spared. He spared us. He spared you. He spared me. He spared our children. And we made it. Amen. All right, let me. All right, scripture, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's start at verse 1. This know, this know also that in the last day, perilous time shall come. Men shall be lover of their own self, covetous, boastful, proud. Blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accuser, all right, incontinent, fierce, despise of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godly but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into the houses and lead captive silly woman, laden with sin, led away with diverse lust, ever learning, ever learning, and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Now at Janus and Jambres, which stood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt mind, reprobate, concerning the faith. But they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men, and there's also, and there's also war. Amen. Amen. 
Thank you, Dot Don, Deborah, Lewis, and others for joining in. Amen. Just for a, a while this evening, from that first break, or first verse, Paul writing to the young protege that in the last days, perilous time shall come. Just for a, a little while, I want to preach from this topic, perilous times are here. Perilous times. See, Antonisa, join in. Good evening to, to all friends and family. Perilous time. All right. Now, Thomas Paine, we may, may remember him uh, from history, the American revolutionary philosopher and statesman. He, he wrote a series of, of pamphlets to encourage the revolutionary soldier <coughs> The revolutionary soldiers, the revolutionary soldiers to stay on the battlefield and continue the good fight. My, my, my. You see, he had at that time what they call summer soldiers and sunshine patriot. That means Sister Bobby and, and Sharon down in Florida, that long as everything was going okay, they were with the fight. But when things got just a little hard, they packed up and went on home. Now, the summer soldiers were there during the summer, but they had to go back and fight and, and harvest their crop in the, in the fall time. My, my, my. Perilous time. So our question to you, are we summer soldiers or sunshine patriots? In the each life, some rain must fall. We know God let it let his rain fall on the just as well as the unjust. So we thank you, friends and family members, for sharing with us this evening and sharing this message with your friends and your neighbors and, and your network. All right. So Thomas Paine writing to encourage the folk to stay in the good fight. See, Stephanie had joined us. In his pamphlet that he, he wrote in December 1776 called The Crisis, you may remember this quote. These be the time that try men's soul. These be the time that try men's soul. What uh, uh, Mr. Thomas Paine was saying way back there in the 1700s was those were perilous times. Now, perilous, the root word being peril, perilous means very dangerous, full of risk, hazardous, harmful, dreadful, threatened. Sounds a lot like today. All these things are still going on. Dangerous time, perilous time, threatened, hazardous to your health. And we're in the midst of perilous time. We're in the midst of dangerous time. Right here, right now. Good to join us with us, Cowboy Rick, Pastor Rick. Now, long before Thomas Paine, Sister Sh uh, uh, Shufford, Charlene, how you doing? Down on Kermer. All right, Bob, uh, Deacon Bond, Wolf. Long before Thomas Paine thought his series, The Crisis and Other Than, wrote, these are perilous times. These are the times that try men's soul. Long before they even thought about coming along. Uh, 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 Paul, in his second letter to his young son in the ministry, wrote, and he outlined about these perilous times. He t warned Timothy about these dangerous times. Well, let's look at this outline and see what Paul had to say to this young man, Timothy, about these dangerous times, about these perilous times. Well, it seems like those times are here today. Matter of fact, if you think about it, there's always been perilous times. And there always will be dangerous times. All right. Long as Satan is on the loose, these times are, are dangerous and going to continue to be dangerous. Well, you 
barely can walk down the street without having to worry about straight bullying. You don't have to walk down the street that the police have shown that you can be doing nothing, relaxing in the comfort of your home and they break the door down and give you a serious case of death and kill you and say they was in danger for their life. It's amazing that particularly for African-American Negro colored folks that they've called us down through the years, how perilous the times are up for us. That we can be unarmed, minding our own business, standing up, and the next thing, we're dead. These are perilous times. Remember, Satan is on the tack. His mission is simple. Steal, kill, and destroy, uh, Brother Timoko. Steal, kill, and destroy. Converse to that Jesus said, but I have come to give you life and give you life more abundant. So we are in the midst of perilous time. We are in the midst of dangerous time. COVID running rapid. All right. A four fry, four fries burning down the West Coast. All right. Hurricane tornadoes active on the East Coast. Killing prejudice, hatred all over. We right in the midst of prayer. A, a, a perilous time, a dangerous time. So Paul writing to this young man, young Timothy, about these times. Understand the first thing that, that Paul does is warn against these times. He warns Timothy about these dangerous times and gives him some advice on what to do. He starts out with, in the last day, well, we've been hearing about the last day for a long, long time. What exactly are we talking about when we say the last day? Well, the last day began at Pentecost when God poured out his spirit on all men and they will continue until Christ come back. So these last days until Christ come going to be some dangerous time, some hazardous time. All right, so the, the, the last day he writes, uh, first thing we want to look, he cautioned, all right, against them. He cautioned against their time. He said, know this also, understand this, be well aware of that perilous time shall come, that dangerous time are here. My, my, my. We write in the midst of these dangerous times. And that caution Paul gave Timothy way back then, uh, Mother Carrie, Pratt, how you doing? Thank you so much for tuning in with us. That this, this caution that Paul wrote to Timothy about these dangerous times, these perilous times, these hard times, these hazardous times, where we just afraid of everything, all right? He warned Timothy about that. And he warned them that they will come. But I'm here to tell you, that the dangerous time, the perilous time are here right now. And they have been here for a long, long time. And as Jesus told his disciples, you haven't seen nothing there. This is just the beginning of the end. In, in other words, from here, it's going to go from bad to worse. So he cautioned against perilous time. Uh, 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 Pastor Pratt, gl glad you can tune in with us. Be, be blessed and thank you for your, for your faithfulness. All right, now, we as minister got to stay on the wall and warn the people that the time are perilous. All right, now, it's not just us pastors, preachers, it's all of us. And we told you that that phrase Peter tells us you are a chosen generation, a raw priesthood that have been called out of darkness into the marvelous light to spread the gospel. So we all should be warning that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Telling men, women, boys, and girls that God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. So he cautioned about the dangerous time. All right. He tells about the dangerous time. Then he go ahead and tell 
Timothy warned Timothy about the character of this time. In other words, let's see who we will be dealing with during this time. And, and you got a whole laundry list there that we can see who and what we are dealing with starting at verse 2 through 4. And he called them, men shall be lover of their own self. These are, are, are people we're dealing with. All right. Covetous. All right. I got one. You got one. But you, for some reason, you won't mind. I got a house. You got a house. But you won't buy a house. I got a car. You got a car. For some reason, you want my car. I got a car. You want a car. But some reason, you want my whatever. You fill in the blank. My dog. My cat. My woman. My house. My job. Covered us. Boast us bragging about what you got, all right? And, and I might afraid what we're doing, we're worshiping the creation more than the creator. My, my, my. These are perilous, perilous times. Proud, arrogant, blasphemer, all right? Profane against God. Disobedient to parents. <laughs> What about that scripture that says, honor thy father and thy mother that the days might be long on this earth? That's a commandment. Unthankful and unholy. All right. Now, he keeps going right there. These are the character. He cautioned us to, uh, against these times. And now he saying to us or showing to us who these individuals are that we are dealing with. Without natural affection, no love between them. Truth breaker, all right? Everywhere they go, they stir up mess. False accused, false accuser, which is a nice way of saying lying, all right? Fear, desperate of these that are no good. Despise of those that are good. They hate us. Anyone that claim the name of Lord Jesus as their Lord, and their Savior, they hate them. And the list goes on. Traitors, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Their motto is eat, drink, and be merry. My, my, my. Worshiping, loving the creation more than the creator. All right. So those are the character of of this time, and we look, and we can see those individuals all around us. Yes, we got some in our own family, some our friends, all right, and we just can't stop loving them and praying for them because they are characters in this time. They are part of the problem. So my question to you, where do you stand? You're either part of the problem or you're part of the solution. And if you have not accepted God, accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, then you're part of the problem. And so those are the character, all just say evil folk that will not, have not, and refuse to acknowledge Jesus as Lord of Lord and King of King. We got some more praying to do. We got to stay on our knees. We got to fight. Just like uh, uh, Thomas Paine warned, encouraged the revolutionary soldier to stay on the battlefield. Paul later told Timothy to fight the good fight of faith. We got to continue to watch, to fight, and to pray. Because these are perilous times. These are dangerous times. These are treacherous times. All right? They're not quite Desperate, because we realize that desperate time calls for desperate measures. We're not desperate, all right, but we know what to do. All right, you're cautioning against them, all right. We know the character. We know who they are. And now we're going to look at the cure. He cautioned us. He warned us against them. He, the character, he identified who they were. And in verses 5 through 9, he gave us a cure. All right. You see, and in verse 5, look at that. It starts out, 
having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. All right. That's part of the cue right there. We got to turn away from anyone that is not godly. Now, this commandment was given by Paul, uh, given by God through Paul early, where he admonished us to be ye separated. Come out from amongst them. Now, we can't come out from amongst everybody. We can't leave our family. All right. We got to go to work. Uh, but so what does be ye separated come out from a, 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 a amongst them? Separated means set apart to be used by God. Uh, and when you come out from amongst them, that means you no longer socialize with them and do the thing that they do. All right. You got to be separated. So for God, I live and for God, I die. And that is how we fight the good fight of faith. You see, the military, every soldier, every unit that's on the front line have what they call a fighting position. And if you are saints of God, you have got to get into your fighting position. You see, your fighting position for the saint is down on your knees. The fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous man, the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous woman avail it much. So the cure is to pray. Come out from among them. All right, now, now and, and he gives some a, a, example, all right, of, of, of those treacherous folk. He gives some example, all right, and, and, and in verse 6, he gives two examples, one for men and one for women. The example that he gives for women is that this sort, all right, the perilous individual, they will creep in the houses and lead captive silly women laden with sin, lead them away to a diver's lust. This is talk about uh, illicit sexual relationship. The men will creep in the house, all right, and lead away. The Bible called them silly women that are laden, loaded with sin, all right, and lead them astray to their own sexual lust. All right. Ever. They ever learning, but they never come into the knowledge of the truth. Uh, Paul said, uh, you should be teaching, but you're still having, finding yourself having to be taught. Paul said, I want to feed you with milk. I want to feed you with meat, but I still got to feed you with milk. Now, and then he give another example for the men. Silly woman laden with a uh, uh, sin, sinful, lustful women that will easily be laid astray. All right. And then he talks about the men. And now he give two examples, Janus and Jambri. They withstood Moses. They resist the truth. They are corrupt mind and reprobate concerning the faith. Now, this word reprobate, that means when it, you probably heard this scripture, God had turned them over to the reprobate mind. A reprobate is a very evil person that blasphemed the name of God and refused and will not acknowledge that God is Lord of all. All right. When God said he turned them over to the reprobate mind, that means they are in hell. They're going to lift, lift up their eyes and they're going to bust hell wide open. All right. Now, you hear folk talk about the reprobate. Well, reprobate, you an individual that is a reprobate that God had marked for destruction, you can't pray for that individual. My, my, my. All right. So we got these two examples. Uh, these are more characters. All right. The silly woman loading down with their sin, being led away by to sexual misconduct, then you got the crazy men that resist anything that's pure and, 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 and righteous, uh, Sister Bart, and they are corrupt mind. They resist the truth and a follow lie. They have corrupt mind and reprobate concerning the faith. My, my, my. So Paul 
still talking to Timothy about these individuals. He cautioned, he cautioned him against them. He characterized those, identify verse one to four who they were. All right. They talk about the silly men and the crazy woman. And now he's going to give us the cure. All right. But he tells the first about these. You look at verse nine. They shall proceed no further for they folly, their foolishness shall be made manifest to all men. In other words, destruct pride goes before destruction and the world is going to see who they are. So what is the cure? The cure is the cure that has always been when these words were recorded, 2 Chronicles 7 14. I know you heard me talk a lot about 2 Chronicles 7 14, but the cure for the perilous time, the cure of uh, Coleman for the perilous time, Sabrina, is the same cure that had been that was there when the word was penned. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, then Sister Vena will they hear from heaven and I will heal their land. The cure is what it has always been. John 10, 10 says, I have come to give you life and give you that life more abundantly. Now, having dealt with all of that, all right, we find that the answer of Brother Larry is Jesus. Double je je jeopardy, Ask the question, and you have to give the answer, or vice versa. Double jeopardy, give the answer, and you have to give the question. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter what the question, Jesus is the answer. What can wash away all my sin? Who is Jesus? Who can make me whole again? Who is Jesus? All right, so Francis, uh, Francis glad you're watching with us. It is Jesus the Christ the son of the living God. He is the answer. And finally, Paul goes about and gives Timothy a charge. This charge we find in verses 10 and following. But he tell Timothy, remind Timothy that you have fully known my doctrine, the manner of my life and purposeful faith, long-suffering charity and patience. What Paul was telling Timothy, follow my lead. Follow my example. Yes, I've been persecuted in these perilous times. All right? And we'll live godly in Christ. Everyone that live God in Christ shall suffer persecution. All right? But I got news for you. He's still telling Timothy, that is going to get evil men and evil women and seducers going to whack worse and worse. I remind you that this is just the beginning. But he tell Timothy, he charged him, Brother Willie, just like God is charging us to continue in God's word. God's word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto our path. It doesn't matter what the times are like. We understand that these are perilous times. We understand that these are dangerous times. We understand that these are treacherous times. We also understand that these are just the beginning. But we also know that we got the cure. If we call on the name of Jesus, then we realize that we shall be saved. It doesn't matter what time you come to Jesus. You can call on him in the morning. You can call on him at noonday. You can call on him way over in the midnight hour. But just make sure you call on him. Yes, he charged us. Thank Bob for a charge to keep our help and our God to glorify. We don't have to worry about saving anybody. All we got to do 
and lift up the name of Jesus. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I draw all men unto me. I draw, tra I draw traitors unto me. I draw hypocrites unto me. If I be lifted up, I draw liars, cheaters, backstabbers, backbiters, whole man, wine bibbers. I draw all men unto me. And I'm so glad that one day he picked me up out of the muck and mire clay and he placed my feet on solid rock. This Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the great I am. I'm Daniel Stone rolling down through Babylon. I'm Job Hawk porn in the ballet. I'm water in dry places. I'm bread in a starving land. I am the first. I am the last. I'm so glad that he came down to save a wretch like me. He came down in perilous time for a wretch like you. Yeah, and I'm so glad that he humbled himself and went to the cross. Really? Really? That Friday, he went to the cross when they whooped him up the hill. He never said a mumbling word. The sins got heavy and he dropped down on his knee, but he kept on up Carry Hill. He had a date with destiny. He had to save the world for me, for you, and for everyone. What they hung him high, they stretched him wide. He hung his head and he died. They put him in a grave, but the grave couldn't hold him. Because early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And for time like these, as Thomas Paine said, these be the time that try men so. Paul told Timothy, these are perilous times. I'm just telling you what they are. They are dangerous times. Hard times. Difficult times. And God, one day, is going to come for his trait without spot or without rancor and we're going home to be with Jesus and there will be no more perilous time. There will be no more hard time. Every day going to be like Sunday and the Sabbath will have no end. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Praise God. Amen. 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 To God be the glory for the things he had done. Amen. Luther Bond, trouble in my way. That's what we got in this, pre in this treacherous time. Praying for Dickon Charles Rogers. They just got word he's in the VA. So let's lift up the Rogers and Granberry family. Deacon Charles, Charles Rogers at the VA. We offer you Jesus the Christ. Jesus is the answer. Jesus can fix it. Have no why. Trouble in my way. We got to cry sometimes. So much trouble. We got to cry sometime. Lay it awake at night. That's all right. Jesus. We offer you Jesus. Give your heart to God. Give your heart to God and give your hand to one of these men of God, one of these women of God. And we will direct you where you need to go to get saved. Thank you, all you pastors, all you preachers, all you evangelists, all you missionaries, all you prophets, all you prophets for tuning in with us. We offer you Jesus Christ, 
They wasn't worried. Jesus will fix it. Jesus will fix it. Troubles in our way. It's all right. Jesus will fix it. Ask that you, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this, pray this simple prayer with me. Sometimes it's simply referred to as a sinner's prayer, praying for repentance. And it goes, Dear God in heaven, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge to you that I am a sinner. I am sorry for my sin and the life I have lived. I need your forgiveness. I believe that you are that you, your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, shed his precious blood on the cross at Calvary and died for my sin, and I'm now willing to turn from my sin. You said in the Bible, if we should confess the Lord, our God, and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we shall be saved. Right now, I confess Jesus as my Lord with my heart. I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead this very morning moment I accept Jesus as my own personal Savior according to his word and right now I am saved. Simple as if you prayed that prayer you're saved. Give your heart to God what you just did and give your hand to one of these men, one of these women of God. Amen. Gracious Lord we thank and praise you for life, help and strength. Now Lord thank you for the eyes are seen, what is the heart but most of what our heart felt as you walked with us along the way and poured us out of blessing. Now, may the love of God, the grace of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest rule about each other now, henceforth, and forevermore. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you Sunday morning with another exciting message from God on high. Don't forget to share that with your friends, with your family, and with your network. To God be the glory. Remember, these are perilous times. These are dangerous times. But Jesus is the cure.